quantities of one chemical to quantities of another chemical, right? That's the whole purpose of stoichiometry. Now, what's the key way that we do that? How do we go from one thing to another thing? What's the, what's the mathematical... Yeah, the molar ratio, right? We need a molar ratio. Anytime you want, anytime you want to relate amounts of one thing to amounts of another thing, you're going to need, absolutely, you need the molar ratio. So let's do this. If you add 8 moles of propane reacting with 35 moles of oxygen, which one would be your limiting reagent? So you've got 8 moles of propane. No. Is this a different thing? No, that's right. No, that's not. She's just looking fine. It's the limiting one. All right. Let me share this. No, that's right. So we all had this sheet out like five minutes ago, right? Yeah. And we all would have known that we're on this. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have eight moles of that, and it's reacting with 35 moles of this. And we're wondering which one's going to be used up first. Do you remember how we did this? You do one, if it doesn't work, you do the other one. Yeah, you, well, you just, you just do one simply because it's asking, all it's asking is which one is the limiting reagent. So all, all you want to know is which one's going to run out, right? If you figure out which one is the excess reagent, then the other thing has to be the limiting reagent. That's all you got to do. So if you add 8 moles of propane reacting with 35 moles of oxygen, which one would be your limiting reagent? Okay, what do you want to try and figure out? Do you want to try and, f do you want to try and figure out how much propane we're going to need or how much oxygen we're going to need? Oxygen. Okay. Oh. Doesn't matter. matter. Okay, let's figure out how many moles of oxygen we're going to need given our quantity of pro propane. So remember, I, we have 35 moles of oxygen, but we want to know, is this too much or too little? That's what we want to know. Are you done? Okay, you just put it in the bin. Put it in the empty bin, please. So we want to know how many moles of oxygen we're actually going to need. So 5 moles of oxygen for every 1 mole of C3H8. And we actually have 8 moles of C3H8. So 5 times 8 is 40 moles of oxygen. Okay. How much oxygen do we actually have? 35. And in order to completely react 8 moles of propane, how much do we need? 40. Do we have enough or not enough? We don't have enough. So what does that tell you? If we don't have enough, it's the limiting reagent. So oxygen is the limiting reagent. How many moles of carbon dioxide would actually be produced? Okay, so which one's going to run out first, the propane or the oxygen? The oxygen. So using this value, using this value, because we're going to use all of this up, now we want to know how much carbon dioxide is going to be produced. So the number of moles of carbon dioxide based on our 35 moles of oxygen. Well, it's a 3 to 5 ratio. 3 moles of carbon dioxide per 5 moles of oxygen. And we've got 35 moles of oxygen. That's going to be used up. 35 divided by 5, 7, 7 times 3 is 21, so ship gets 21 moles of carbon dioxide. Now, does anybody have any questions on what we just did?
That's 21. Can you just like review how you like set up the equation, like which, like, yeah. In this, in this value, when we the one that we just did, like, how or do the, you know, like just the molar ratio? The molar like ratio. Knowing which to put, uh, like, on top of. This. Yeah, then yeah, that's a great question. That's a really good I just question. Need it yeah, yeah, mind. totally. <laughs> Our molar ratio. Our molar ratio is always is always going to be ratio. Our molar ratio is always going to be the unknown substance. It's the coefficient of the unknown substance divided by the coefficient of the given substance. So, in here, in this question, what's our unknown substance? Let's just read the question and let's identify what our unknown is. How many moles of carbon dioxide? Does it sound like it a it's asking you something to do with carbon dioxide? Yeah. yeah, then you have to put that coefficient on top. Then you have to, you have to relate that back to a substance you know something about. You're being given that information. What's the only substance we know we're going to use up all of that stuff? Oxygen, because it's our limiting reagent. Are we going to use up all eight moles of our propane? No, it's the excess reagent. We're not going to use up all of it. So this, this value, eight moles, means nothing to us. It has absolutely no value to us at all because we're not going to use all of it up. It's like saying there's a million people in, you know, or there's 100,000 people in Red Deer, you know what I mean? But there's this many people who are affected by a certain condition. You don't actually care how many people are in Red Deer. You care about how many people are affected by a certain condition, right? So it doesn't matter how many in excess. It just matters how many are being affected. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So we're going, to use, we're going to use the molar ratio a bunch of times here. But what, what we want to do is we just want to um, get used to a few different concepts. This, write the net ionic equation for this compound, or for this chemical reaction. Do you remember what the purpose of writing a net ionic reaction was? No. Yeah, the purpose of writing a net ionic reaction, the whole idea behind it is let's see what's actually doing something. Because there's probably some stuff in here that's not doing anything and we want to ignore it. It's like if I had if I put two things together, or sorry, let's let's say I pour five things together into a big bucket and only two of them react, what do we care about? The two. the two that reacted. We don't care about the five things that, or the other three things that didn't react. Okay, so this is this is a way of of cutting past all of the BS and just seeing what's actually happening to our substances. So um, it's a way of seeing. Split up the ones. Good. What's actually changing? <laughs> Basically, Stephanie, Stephanie, you're totally correct. Stephanie, sorry. Stephanie, you're totally correct. Is that if if something, for example, is for example, magnesium chloride, does it exist as magnesium chloride in water? Uh, no. Maybe. No. I don't know. Maybe. Aaliyah, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Why? Why does magnesium chloride not exist as magnesium chloride in solution? Because it's soluble. Remember, when, when ionic compounds are soluble, they're, they separate from each other. Now, when I, ions separate from each other, normally it's a positive and a negative ion stuck together. But now, when they, they dissolve in water, they separate, and now the magnesium ions can react totally independently from the chlorides. They don't, they're not bound together what one thing does, the other thing does. Now the magnesiums can react with something. 
the chlorides can or not or whatever. They just do what they do. So this is a way for us to be able to identify it. The first thing we got to do, write a balanced reaction. That's already done for us. The next thing we have to do, split it up if it can be split up. What things can be split up? Aqueous ionic compounds, and what else? Um, acids. What kind of acids? Strong acids. Strong acids can separate. Is that okay? Do you see any aqueous ionic compounds here? I see the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see any other aqueous ionic compounds? I see the third one. Do you see any strong acids here? No. No. So let's not worry about that. So in the next step, what when magnesium chloride splits up, what would it split up into? Um, whatever it's magnesium. Magnesium and and two chlorides, right? Now, I've made, I've made a catastrophic error. I've made uh, like a, an honestly unforgivable error. Now, I really, no, I really sincerely want you to pay attention. This is one of those benchmarks. If you understand the error, if you look at this and you can understand the error that I made then you'll probably do okay at the Chem 30 level. And I'm not even joking about that. I'm seriously not joking. This is the biggest barrier. What did I miss? Charges. This is an ionic compound. Is it made of atoms or ions? Ions. Two plus and minus. Sodium chloride's gonna split up. What's it gonna split up into? Two sodiums, two chlorides, and then we're gonna have our Mg solid. I man, I'm I'm so I'm very confused. Why does why does the magnesium have a charge here and and not over here? That doesn't make any sense to me. That's an element. This is an element. And that's all you need to know. This is a combination of the ion plus some electrons, right? There's a, there's a world of difference between magnesium ions and magnesium salt. And some of my chem 30s are still... Yeah, just on... Yeah, that's... Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you for coming. Okay. Is there anything in here I can, I can ignore because it, it seems to us like it doesn't do anything? So the chloride and the chloride, would you agree they don't do anything? What's the word for that? Uh, Good. So we can cancel out only the spectators. Only the spectators are allowed to cancel. We are not allowed to cancel the magnesiums. Is, the, is there a difference between magnesium 2 plus and magnesium? Yes. Yeah, big, big time, right? Okay, so let's rewrite everything that we have. Magnesium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 sodium solids turn into 2 sodium ions plus magnesium solids. And that's our, that's our, uh, our net ionic equation. How do we know that that's our net ionic equation? It's balanced in all the ways that we care about, right? Both of them. Conservation of mass and cost, conservation of charge. Boom, love it. Okay, percent yield. I, I'm not going to talk a bunch about. All I care about for percent yield is that you understand that if I ever ask you for percent yield, it's how much did you actually get divided by how much were you supposed to get, right? 
So it's experimental divided by theoretical times 100%. It's the exact same thing as calculating a mark on a test, right? If you were supposed to get um, 30 on a test, but you ended up getting 35 on a test, is that possible? Is it possible to get 35 out of 30 on a test? If there are bonus marks, right? Okay, but I, I, I need you to pay attention. I need you to understand that rarely does that happen. Most of the time, our percent yields are less than 100%, right? The reason why your percent yields are less than 100% is because it's actually impossible to get a percent yield greater than 100%. There must have been an error. Maybe your sample was too wet, that kind of thing. Okay, we're going to start talking about pH curves, and then we're going to do a titration, and then that's it for stoichiometry. So. <laughs> I'm curious, there's a bunch of different things that we can talk about when we look at a pH curve. For example, we should always have a title on a pH curve, okay? So, your title should be the titration of this with this. So the titration of something that you started with with something that you're adding. What are we starting with? We're starting with an acid, right? So this is the titration of a blank acid with blank. And what are we adding to it? We're adding a base. You, al you always add either a strong acid or a strong base. You never add a weak acid or a weak base, okay? So a strong base. Now, there's two ways that you can tell, and a bunch of people already said the answer, but there's two ways that you can tell if we're starting with a weak acid or if we're starting with a weak base. I want you to tell me how you knew, not the answer. I want you to tell me how you knew, Aaliyah. Okay. If, if the equivalence point is at seven, that means you're making, your products that you're making are completely neutral. The only way you can do that is with a strong acid and a strong base. Now there's another way of telling. Morgan, sorry. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God. This is so bad. It's Monday. We did it. I was almost. Uh, okay, Morgan. Uh, I, I, I screwed up your name earlier. I'm sorry. I got to screw up your name. What's your name? Roy. Roy. Gee. I was, I was up until 3.30 in the morning, Mark. So I'm sorry. Pardon? Time management? Yeah, you could talk to me. Okay, Roy. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that's going up on YouTube. Yeah, it's posted. Yeah, it's always posted. It's always posted. Roy. There's like no hump in the line. There's no hump at the beginning, right? We don't, we don't make a buffer region here. Right? With a weak acid, if we were titrating a weak acid, we'd make a buffer region, so there'd be a hump, it'd go up, and then it would flatten out. But here it's just a slow, gradual climb, and then we shoot up. Okay, so what that means is that, uh, obviously we're starting off with a strong acid. What would be an appropriate indicator for this equivalence point? How do you know? Because that's what you always say? Oh. It is right. Yeah. Why is bromothymol blue an appropriate indicator? Yep. You want, you want the equivalence point to fall smack dab in between the, P, the change in color of the pH range, right? So here is going to be bromothymol blue. 
What if our equivalence point? What if our equivalence point was at um, I don't know, was at eight point two? What if our equivalence point was eight point two? What would be an appropriate indicator? <laughs> you, just, you just go in and you just look at it, hey? Yeah. I actually have no idea how you pronounce it. I would imagine it's Cresol, but so Cresol red, right? Cresol red. Did you actually answer? Ask? Yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, so Cresol red would good. What color do you expect at equivalence? Uh, if if the equivalence point was at eight point two, what color would you expect? Orange. Orange, right? You always want whatever the middle color is. So for bromothymol blue, bromothymol blue, what color do you want? Green. Green, right? For phenolphthalein, what color do you want? Pale pink, light pink, the palest pale pink you can pale pink imagine, right? That's that's what we were talking about. Good. How much? Uh, I mean, this is kind of a stupid unit, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, how much uh, titrant did it take to reach equivalence? 25. 25, and I don't know if you knew this, but a, a cubic centimeter is defined as a milliliter. This is, they're the same thing. That's how we define a, cubic, or a milliliter is a, a cubic centimeter. So whatever. Wow. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about today, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of information to work on. So... We've got a titration, we're titrating acetic acid with sodium hydroxide and it's making water and sodium acetate. And what I'm wondering is the, the, we need to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide. That's our goal. Now, do we know anything about either acetic acid or sodium hydroxide? Look through the question. And tell me, do you know anything about either acetic acid or sodium hydroxide? Yeah. So this is a strong base, right? No. That's a weak acid. Yeah. How much of this are we using? Do you know? Do you know the volume of this? 20 milliliters, right? It says here 20 milliliters of this concentration of acetic acid. So we're using 20 milliliters of this stuff. Do you know what the concentration of the acetic acid is? Uh, 0 0.3 0 0.300 moles per liter. We're trying to find the concentration of this stuff. And it's going to give you the volume, the average volume of sodium hydroxide that we used in here. I want you to figure out, are we going to use all four trials? Or is there a trial that we're going to throw out? Why? What's 15.82 minus 1.59? 14.23. Okay, from this information alone, can we tell if we're going to throw this out? No. 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 Okay, move on to the next one. What's 29.65 minus 15.82? 13.83. 13.83. Are these two close enough to each other? No. No, they're not plus minus 0.2, right? The highest and lowest that you accept can only be 0.2 away from each other. So what that means is one of these has to go. Do you know which one yet? No. No. Okay, move on to the next one. 43.31 uh, minus 29.65. Thirteen point six six. So the first one is gone, correct? 
Yeah. yeah, these two are appropriate right now, but the first one's gone because it's outside of that range. And then 13.77 minus 0 0.05 is 13.72. And so, yes, all of these values, the highest and the lowest are within 0 0.2 of each other. We're happy with that. So what was the volume of sodium hydroxide used? What was the average volume? Add them together and divide by three. Maya, what did you get? 13.74. 13.74. Okay. So the average volume is 13.74 milliliters. So 13.74 milliliters. This is the exact same thing as the solution stoichiometry question. It's totally identical. What, what are you looking for? What do you want out of this question? Concentration. And what is concentration typically measured in? Moles per meter. What's the other way that it can be measured? Like kilograms or something? We could do parts per million or percent, right? What? There's one that like you need to use something else for sure. Yeah, we can do percent concentration, so grams per hundred milliliter, or milliliters per hundred milliliters, or there was parts per million, and that was milligrams per kilogram. Yes. Like one question maybe on each. Hey, if you look at your checklist, remember if you look at your checklist. You just go through all of the things in your checklist, right? Okay. What's the key thing? Shh. It's going to be really, really difficult for you to do any stoichiometry if you can't start that. If you know, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not joking. Some of you kind of scoffed at that, but if you can't actually start with what you want, it's going to be super difficult for you to do unit analysis. Like, just go back to the question and read. Calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So what is concentration usually measured in? If you, most for later, but let's say you didn't know that. What, what would you do? Just go into your data booklet, right? It's almost at the very front. It's the, day, it's the page after the periodic table. Is there something to do with amount concentration in here, or concentration, or whatever? Yes. Way at the bottom, moles per liter. So you're looking for, you're looking for moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so what do you want to go on top? Moles of what? Um, moles of it. Do you see moles of any OH anywhere in here? Because I do. Remember, what is the key step in going from one substance to another substance? The molar ratio. You always need the molar ratio. Okay, let's look at this. What should our molar ratio be? Knowing now. Knowing now that the molar ratio is unknown over given, what's our unknown substance in here? The NaOH. And what's the only substance, the only other substance we're being given information on? Yeah, so it's a one, one to one ratio. So one mole of sodium hydroxide and every one mole of CH3COOH. <laughs> Do we, do, did we successfully just make half of our units? Do you want moles of sodium hydroxide to be on top? Yeah, we've got moles of sodium hydroxide on top. This is awesome. We're like halfway there, basically. What's the only thing we have to do now? Do you want moles of, of acetic acid on the bottom? So you got to cancel it out. Where do you see moles of acetic acid? Acetic acid, 
and I see moles, right? 0 0.300 moles per liter. 0 0.300 moles of CH3COOH over one liter of CH3COOH. This is seriously fantastic. Moles of acetic acid and moles of acetic acid have just canceled out. We're, we're cruising along. Everything's going really well. Do we have the unit that we want on the bottom? We've got liters, but it's not liters of sodium hydroxide. So how can we cancel out liters of acetic acid? 20 milliliters of acetic acid, good. Times 20 milliliters of CH3COOH. Yeah, so would you agree liters of acetic acid and liters of acetic acid cancel out? And all we need to do is put liters of sodium hydroxide. Do we have liters? We got milliliters, right? 13.74 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And what was convenient about this? Milli and milli cancel each other out. All milli is times 10 to the negative 3. That's, it's just a number. It's like 2 divided by 2. They cancel each other out. So we're left with liters of so sodium hydroxide on the bottom and moles of sodium hydroxide on the top. And uh, I don't know, 0 0.43 or something? 4366. Six. Okay, give me a buttload of digits. Give me five digits. 0 0.43. Moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. Where are we going to stop? Three digits, right? Where's my first three digits? Four, three, six. The six needs to be turned into a seven, right? 0 0.436. 37 moles per liter. Unknown over given, right? Yeah. But you can piece together the molar ratio a lot of the time. No, I just keep forgetting it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, uh, I'm going to give you. Oh, man. I don't even know where I put it. It's right here. I, I'm going to give you a sheet. Now, I, I recognize, I understand that there's only eight, nine minutes left in class. I get that. You're going to have your practice final exam tomorrow. And keep in mind, if it goes great, that's awesome. You tell me, you tell me what you want to replace, and that's fantastic. I will replace it. But if it doesn't go awesome, you can just use it as a learning experience. That's all I care about. I, no, I just want you to test yourself and see how well you actually understand the information. Yeah. So, this sheet that I'm handing out, the key is going to go on Google Classrooms. Uh, I have a key here if you want it. It doesn't really matter to me. I have a key here if you want it. But, um, That's pretty much it. When you come in tomorrow, you, you, you can start early, you can start on time, you can whatever. Uh, yeah, it's made to last like 60 out of the 74 minutes, that kind of thing. When, yeah, when you're done, you just take it to me and I'll, I'll mark it at the end of the day, because um, I'm not going to mark it there in class or anything like that. I'll mark it at the end of the day. And then if you want to come in Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Monday or even Tuesday morning or something like that, 
you want to come in at any point in time before your final exam, you come in and you take a look at it. We can sit down one on one and we can go through very specific questions. We can go through every question or no question, whatever. Uh, I, I, I have to check. I'd have to check on that.